Hey, Chicago, what do you say? Welcome to the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook. Make sure you download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome to Dansby Day here at CHGO. Luke Stuckmeyer and Cody Del Mendo. We just heard from Dansby Swanson, the Cubs' new free agent shortstop. Good old number seven over at Wrigley Field. Ryan Herrera was there. He will join us Later in this show, uh, we've got some great clips to play in case you missed Dansby Swanson's press conference live on Marquee Network. Uh, we're going to play some of that. We're going to react to some of that. And we also have another special guest joining us, uh, old friend Kelly Kroll is going to join us, who has been covering mm-hmm. Dansby Swanson in Atlanta for the last couple of years. And she's going to tell us why she likes Dansby Swanson so much, mm-hmm. why he's such a good fit for the Cubs, and why mm-hmm. we will love Dansby Swanson here in Chicago. So that's Absolutely. coming up. In just a also, little bit. Also, shout out Obvious Shirts first comment in the stream. So, wow. uh, shout out to you, Joe. We expect a pretty good uh, chat going here today. Mm-hmm. I was super impressed with Dansby Swanson. Uh, I didn't know what to expect in the press conference. Uh, he talked a lot about winning, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the first thing Jed said right out of the gate was winning, and we will get to that, and that he is a winner. And I think Dansby picked up his first win in a Cubs uniform today by delivering a lot of key messages, not only to the fan base, but also to his future teammates, um, saying what he expects as a leader and what he expects as someone who is a proven winner. Um, and so we'll get to all that, but I, th- there's no way we can't start this with the way he really started the press conference, right? <laughs> right, yeah. The way he ended up in a Cubs uniform. He was there with his new wife, Mallory Pugh, plays for the Red Stars, uh, and uh, nobody knew this. Yeah. Of course, Dansby got married about 10 days ago, and we know he'd been on his honeymoon, but he explained uh, his relationship with his grandfather um, and who how... Passed who passed a day she, after the wedding. I mean, the this, this story's <laughs> unbelievable. Get the tissues ready. This is Dansby Swanson talking about his grandfather and Wrigley Field and what the whole area and what his grandfather meant to him. So I, I've pretty much mentioned to everyone, like being a Cub means more to me than people would realize. Um, it's no secret that I left my hometown team uh, to be here. And I've kept telling everyone that it's more personal to me. So Mallory and I got married December 10th. The next morning we found out that my grandfather um, was not doing so well, um, that he was in hospice. And so we pretty much left our wedding venue the next morning Uh, drove home and basically had to rush over to the senior living facility where he was at and uh, we were gosh dang it so he ended up uh, passing away on the day after we got married and the one thing that just always stood out was he lived across the yard from my parents and I and my brother and sister and so every day when I would come home from school I would run up to his house. I'd run in and pretty much like demand that he come outside and hit me ground balls, which he would always do. But every time I walked in, he would have a Cubs game on um, back when it was on WGN. And I can't look at my parents. Um, He would have a Cubs game on and I was always like, pops, we're in Atlanta, dude. Like we're Braves fans. And it was just something he loved baseball so much and all he ever wanted me to be was doing what I'm doing now. So having won a championship in Atlanta for one of his favorite teams, we just felt that the Cubs, which were his second favorite team, that bringing a championship to this city was just what we have felt called to do. So to be able to play for two of my grandfather's two favorite teams, um, means literally like the world to me so thank you and i'm glad i got through that without crying so thank you and what was it like for you to visit here and what are your thoughts about now being you know on the home side playing at wrigley it was always one of my favorite trips of the year uh and you could always tell that because the amount of wives that would come on the trip too you know everyone wanted to come to chicago and be in chicago uh but there's just there's no place that's better than wrigley and the fans like it's such a historic amazing place but the the upgrades and the things that they've done the renovations 
still keep like the baseball at its purest form. Um, you know, even with the with the boards and you know the scoreboards and how they do it, and um, it's just it's it's the best. I mean, like I said, I walked out and just like I felt like a little kid on Christmas, uh, and just like smiling and like giggling to some extent. You know, just that this is home now. You know, and it's uh, it's a it's a beautiful place to be. Um, day games here with the crowd the way it is is second to none. And, uh, you know, we're just looking forward so much to, you know, the next seven years. I mean, what a, what a first impression. I mean, the grandfather thing hit home for so many people, myself included. That's mm-hmm. how I gr- grew up watching Cubs baseball. He yeah. was everything you want in a future leader. Like, we've had so many conversations the last week since, since we knew the signing was coming about – you know, the pros and cons and the money and where he fits into the team and all of those things. We didn't know what shortstop, they got the right guy. I'm confident after hearing that, forget the numbers, they've got the right guy. Yeah, I, I, I certainly feel, not that I was down on it. I don't, anyone who yeah. watch, watches or listens to this podcast doesn't think I'm down on this signing, but <laughs> I certainly feel a lot better about it than I did yesterday, perhaps, you know, because we got to know the guy a little bit more. Yeah. The story about him and his grandpa, like, how many of us can relate to that? Like, like that, I mean, I'm the same Millions way. Millions of Cubs fans can relate to right. that. Right. Like, one of the reasons I'm even a Cubs fan is because my, my grandpa was a, was a yeah. Cubs fan, and I grew up down in, like, Cardinal Red area, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, when my family moved back to Illinois after living in Tennessee for a little bit, I'd I'd come home from school and see my grandpa watching the Cubs on WGN. And, like, right. that is, like, that's how, honestly, how it kind of started. Uh, Sammy Sosa played a big part in that, too. But, again, like, that, uh, so many so many Cubs fans are fans because of that. And, like, that resonates with so many people. And, you know, that I th- that's all I needed to hear. Like, to be honest with you, I watched the press conference. I watched up until that point. I watched a press conference from my TV at home. And then I had to get on the train to come here. But – and I tried to watch most of the rest of it on YouTube mm-hmm. on my way here, but that was li- like it could have ended it right there, and I would have been <laughs> okay. I would have been done. I've been like, all right, let's let's ride. Like let's see what happens over the next several seasons, and and hope and pray that things work out uh, not only on uh, on the field but off the field. And yeah, I mean it's it it does seem like it's the right fit and numbers and p- player performance and all that. Obviously. The guy's got to perform if you're going to make that kind of money. Mm-hmm. But past performance and all these analytics and this and that about, like, a, whether the guy's worth this kind of money or not, at the end of the day, if the team wins and he's a big part of it, no one cares. So He talked about that. Yeah. So, like, I, I love everything he had to say. I, I think that he's definitely going to get the fan base behind him with all that. And, like, I said this about the Contreras thing, right? Like, he's going to do whatever it takes to get the fan base behind him. But I feel like Swanson took it another step and at least giving you something from the emotional side. Um, and to me, that's that shows that he really wanted to be here. And, like, that, that uh, from from our perspective, that's, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, for sure. Pat Hunt in the chat. Uh, welcome to everybody in the chat saying, your proud Dansby Swanson is on your favorite team after hearing him speak today. And you hope that teammates feel that way too, right? Like, yeah. first of all, th- also thank you to Marking Sports Network for broadcasting that live as it was happening so Cubs fans mm-hmm. could see what you hope is the next star on this team, right? Yeah. And he yeah. talked a lot about different things. Uh, first of all, his, you know, somebody asked the question, well, what about your wife playing for the Red Stars? Did that factor in? He's like, well, I mean, <laughs> she didn't push me, but – we are looking for. I'm looking forward to being able to go to her matches and see them in person and being in the same city more often. But really, it was mostly about two things, and he talked about it. Really, Jed talked about it at the very beginning of the press conference. He said, we asked around about Dansby Swanson, and every coach and every player that we talked to, they all talked about one thing, and it was winning. He's a winner. He wants to win. The word winning kept coming up. The, the Big blue W we've got sitting on our desk. Fly the W. That's what this franchise should be about, and that's what he is about. And so Mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot more sound coming up from um, Dansby Swanson. It was a great press conference. I do want to get to him talking about winning 
and the pressure of a contract that is seven years, a $177 million, um, and how he's been through something like that certainly before, and the people that he talked to uh, before he decided to, to come here, some mm-hmm. of them that you may not be too happy with. Jason Hayward was one of them who had great things. An Atlanta guy who ended up with the Cubs and then talked to Dansby Swanson about that. Um, but I believe we have our special guest just about ready. Just about. She looks I, really excited. Yeah, too. she's she's ready to go. <laughs> I, I can tell and, that she can hear us, and, but we can't quite hear her just yet. And, while we're waiting, are we good? Oh, can, okay. Kelly, can you hear us? I can. Hello. All right. All right, here we go. Wow. So you <laughs> all know and love Kelly Crawl from Cubs Baseball, from uh, Beer Money. I don't want to brag, but I was on that show. I was You're not bragging at all, Stuck. Yeah, I don't want to brag, but I know her. And <laughs> uh, we work together. And now Kelly is doing great things with Bally Sports Network in Atlanta, covering the Hawks and mostly the Braves, right? And Kelly, so excited to see you. Uh, tell us about Dansby Swanson and why you think he's a good fit for the Cubs. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons, to be completely honest with you. I'm, I'm right that now Nico Horner basically gets to move over to second and play his natural position, right? Yeah. And so I just think up the middle defensively, you guys got exponentially better overnight with this. Um, the one thing about Dan Swanson and his defense is you will never see that part of his game falter, even if he's having a hard time at the plate, which every guy does at some point or another during the season. I think it's worth pointing out that what Dansby Swanson did last year is clearly the best year of his career um, over the course of his six years in the majors. I think you're going to probably see him fall somewhere between what he did last year and what he did in maybe his most down season that existed. Um, But that all aside, offensively, defensively, what you're getting in Dansby Swanson is an incredible human being, a tremendous clubhouse guy, a leader by nature, And as far as galvanizing a clubhouse and sort of setting a tone that this is how we're going to do things, we're going to post up every day, we're going to be durable, we're going to be reliable, we're going to put the work in. He's all of those things, right? All of those X factors that you hear guys talk about. And he legitimately is that guy. You guys are going to love him. Everybody in the media is going to love him because he's accountable. He will always be in front of his locker, good, bad, ugly. He'll talk to you about it. Um, And he'll be human about it. It might take him a moment, I won't lie. He is a Vanderbilt guy who is taught at the age of 18, 19, 20. Here's how you answer questions. So you might get a few cliches from Dansby from time to time. But as he starts to feel more comfortable, he will open up and he will give you the reality of what's really going on. And for us, you know, that's just it's huge to understand the context of what's going on behind the scenes in a clubhouse through the ups and downs of the season. And I just I can't speak enough good things about Dansby, the guy, the human and then the athlete. So I'm really excited for you guys because. Um, I'm, I'm bummed down here because we're going to certainly miss them. <laughs> uh, you hate to lose a guy like that. But as far as what I've seen with the Cubs and where they're headed, this is the perfect piece to sort of add to that mix and start the trend in the right direction. Um, first off, Kelly, this is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, when I was in college, I was watching you and Luke on my TV. And now I'm doing a podcast with you guys. So I know. It's- this is... <laughs> This is Kelly, like, I know, I know, Kelly, I know. This is like a surreal thing for me, so just just ignore that. Um, <laughs> but a lot of people, or Cubs fans, you know, I'm, I'm the fan guy on this show. Like, I've read a lot of tweets where people are like, well, why didn't the Cubs just pay Javi Baez? Because they kinda, they're they kind of similar players, right? Like, both play shortstop. You know, if there's one flaw in Swanson's game offensively is is the strikeouts for sure. He even said yeah. that on, on in, the in the presser press today. Yeah. Um, So I guess my question to you, as someone who got to see both of them play in in person, what what sticks out about Swanson that might, I don't even want to say make him a better player than Javi Baez, uh, but I don't know, what's what's something that sticks out that I guess puts him above him a little bit more? Yeah, that's an interesting conversation to have, an interesting question. I think 
the Cubs and the Braves probably both share in the thought of hindsight being 2020. Mm -hmm. If they could have gotten a deal done earlier, I think the Cubs certainly would have done that with Javi Baez. And I know that the Braves, back when they could have gotten Swanson for like 6 140 a year ago, looking at what now was the deal that he got, I think they would have done it. So let's start there. I think both mm -hmm. of these guys were tremendous fits for the city that they once did play for. That's just not how it ended up playing out from a deal perspective. That aside, Javi Baez, he was called the magician for a reason, is called the magician for a reason. He gives you those unbelievable jaw-dropping plays and you never know when it's coming. But there were plays, Luke, you know, we watched it. There were also those plays that needed to be made that Javi maybe yeah. just because it's so routine, a lapse in, you know, staying focused in any, you know, that wasn't a play he, he made. And you're kind of like, seriously, man, you can do like a 360 spin and throw it to first from way back in the hole. And yet you can't just make the routine play. But at the same time, Dansby, I think, is the guy that will. Sorry, my Amazon, I think, wanted to tell me that I had a package. You guys know Christmas time <laughs> packages. Anyway, I apologize if you can hear that. Um, he's not going to miss the routine play. That's the one thing. He's incredibly reliable. Um, up the middle. I, I don't know if he has the same amount of range defensively as Javi Baez does, but he has gotten better and better in that regard. I've been so impressed watching him over the last three years. He is starting to make those plays that at one time he couldn't, um, and he works on it. I'm sure he'll bring up at some point Ron Washington and just the, what that man meant for his career and defensively now what he's able to do because of Ron and the work he put in with him. Um, but then you also look at the plate and the strikeouts. Eh, they both kind of have that problem from time to time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not one to like let a, you know, slider away go, right? Um, <laughs> so Dansby, though, to, to your point today with that press conference, he's very self-aware. He's not going to hide from his deficiencies and he's going to tell you what he's doing to work on them. And that's certainly what you want to hear from a player. So I, I think also it's probably worth mentioning that Luke and I, and I know you did too, but they got to see Javi early on in his career. He was a baby when he got called up. And sometimes for those guys finding their leadership ability, it, you know, he didn't need to be that guy because there was the, the lackey, the Lester, the Rossi, the Arietta's in that clubhouse when Javi first came up. Um, Dansby, same deal because of the Freddie Freemans and some of the others that existed. He didn't have to tap into necessarily those those leadership skills. But now in the last year or two with Freddie having left a young core being brought up for the Braves, it, Dansby is an innate leader. I don't know that I saw the same from Javi Baez, but then again, it wasn't that time in his career yet. So he may be that for Detroit. And I'm just not aware because I'm not in that clubhouse every day, but Dansby is that guy. He is a guy that the rookies on the Braves team, they, they so kindly nicknamed him the sheriff because that was kind of his role. He did hold him accountable. They got arrested. They got fined when they weren't on time for things, when they weren't doing the work that they should have done, when they weren't dressed to be ready to go for, you know, early work. Um, Dansby, in his own way, let them know that that's not how they do things with the Braves. And he'll do the same thing in that Cubs clubhouse because it comes to him naturally. And so I guess if that helps, that's a little bit of a comparison, I think, between the two. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the sheriff. Uh, by the way, in the press conference, he did mention that he was called the sheriff and that he'd like a new nickname in Chicago <laughs> if he could get one. Um, but he mentioned specific players that he talked to before signing with the Cubs. And I think back to the Lester signing and what leadership he brought, even though he wasn't an everyday player for the Cubs. And then he specifically mentioned two guys that I thought were really interesting. One, Ian Happ, who was part of his draft class. He said he's become good friends with him, who has become clearly the leader in the clubhouse right now for the Cubs. And two, Jason Hayward, who is taking almost the same exact path, hometown Atlanta guy, a lot of pressure playing at home, coming to the Cubs, and of course was certainly one of the big leaders for the Cubs. What... What examples can you give us other than finding the players that Dansby is going to be the leader? Because 
I would say the press conference alone let us think that he certainly is that guy. But what are some, some examples of leadership that you saw in Atlanta that, that pointed out to you, this guy really is the leader of this team? Yeah, there's so many, um, but I, and it's going to sound so cliche, but the best example I can give you is that Dansby is a leader by example. Dansby's always there early. Dansby's the last one to leave. Like I said, Dansby's always standing in front of his locker. He's accountable. If guys listen to what Dansby's telling reporters, the way he handles it is always very professional, very accountable, very reliable. So I, I hate to say that the leadership just comes innately to him. It does, but I think it's so interesting to know that he did already speak to Ian Happ. I knew Jason Hayward would be in the mix just because I think Jay Hayes, a terrific example of a guy that knows both the Braves culture and clearly the Cubs culture and what the biggest differences will be, how how differently David Ross is going to manage a team versus a Brian Snicker, um, which is different and it's going to be different. And we know that that like works for some guys. I think about Gabe Kapler. There are some guys that can play under a Gabe system and there are others that don't want to play under that system. Now, I think given that Rossi played under a snit, it's a terrific uh transition really i think it's going to be fairly seamless for dansby but i i wish i could give you well okay here's a good example so the braves called up a guy by the name of von grissom last year and he is quite possibly the guy that's going to be now playing a bit of shortstop um dansby would have known that dansby would have known he's a guy that you know eventually the braves may decide to go to instead of paying him the money um, but Vaughn gets up to the majors and he's making his debut at Fenway and the kid and I, by kid, I mean, 21 years old has never bought really, or had someone provide a big league bat. He's still using his minor league bats for a good month in the major <laughs> leagues. Now, granted, I wasn't, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize there was such a difference between the this, the product of wood that you can get for your bats. And there is, yeah. there apparently very much is. And Dansby was the one to finally step over and be like, first of all, you're going to use my bats in the next however many games. And second of all, we're ordering these now, like took the kid into the, you know, um, traveling secretary and was basically like, here is what he needs ordered. We need these ASAP, like, uh, to me, that's just another form of like <laughs> leadership, babysitting, all of the above. <laughs> so, yeah. and it's not below him to take that kind of investment and interest, and and also just to humanize Dansby. Um, I think he made it very clear when he mentioned he and Mallory and stepping out onto the field today and saying, you know, this is where we're supposed to be. Um, the two of them are. Um, very invested in their faith and spiritual. And I knew because of the season of life Dansby's in, having just gotten married, he and Mal, they wanted to be able to be in the same city. They wanted to be able to see one another more than just a 24 hour stint where she happened to be in Seattle. We happened to be flying to Seattle. So they got that little window and then they didn't see each other for another month, which really has been their life for lives, if you will, for the last two to three years. And so I know the fact that they get to be together in Chicago is just so important to both of them. And I think it'll be huge for Dansby and his success there um, in Chicago and just kind of, again, making that transition a little bit easier. Um, but those humanizing aspects to him, that's what was important in his personal life. He's well aware of the guys that have just become fathers, the guys that are going through something with a family member at home checking in on them, making sure they're okay, making sure that in their mental well-being before getting to the field, they're okay. What can he do to help? What can he do to provide assistance in any sort of way? That's, that's just kind of the guy he is. And again, I, I don't think you can have enough of those guys who are self-aware and then also aware of what their teammates are going through to help you through the rough patches of a season. Awesome stuff. How about we play, uh, before we let you go, because I know the holidays are coming and you're enjoying a little off time here and you were very gracious with your time. I'll let's, hang out all day, guys. Let's play the first game ever of Stucky Bucks. Mm. It, it might remind you of another game, you know, that you've played before or hosted before. So, Kelly, for $10, okay. 
<laughs> of Stucky Bucks, which I is uh, right which now. is Monopoly money. It's fake money. <laughs> uh, so you, you're risking nothing for ten bucks. Which former Cubs player twerked on an episode of a television show? Just ten dollars. I feel ten, like this should be so no, much no, 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 no. Hmm. This this former Cubs player did some yeah. twerking in a Cubs dugout alongside David Ross. And has since, I think, even done it again on a bigger stage. But uh, yes, Bizzo, yes, yes. David before. Ross went on to Dancing with the Stars. This guy nope. did the twerking before that, though. It's a gif all over the internet. It, it, it is a gif. <laughs> and God bless him. I, I'm, I love getting to bump into that guy from time to time. And he's another guy, I won't lie, I don't know how much was talked about it, Luke, but I was fortunate enough to do a few games this year for the TBS um, mm -hmm. Tuesday night game. And one of them was the Yankees Angels, which meant a reunion between Rizzo and, of course, Joe Madden. Mm. And with Aaron Judge still on the <laughs> brink, yeah, where he was going to go. And I'm telling you, it was so fascinating to listen to Riz and Joe basically tell Aaron what – Wrigley and the Cubs and the city of Chicago is all about like not that they were necessarily selling him but they certainly were informing him as he mm. went about his decision as to here's things you can expect if you were to be in the pinstripes on the north side and that I tell you what if I could have continued to stay in that conversation without looking creepy and I already did look creepy enough so I exited <laughs> but I would listen to the whole dang thing I tell you it was fascinating so Anthony Rizzo Still one of my OGs. I know he's one of yours too, Luke, but I love seeing him whenever whenever I get the opportunity. Okay, Kelly, do you want to risk your 10 Stucky Bucks and <laughs> go for the $20 Stucky Bucks question? If I only get to do this once a year with you, we are going big. Going to go so. for it. Going to oh, go yeah. for it. I, like I got to come up with a question now. Uh, <laughs> let me think. Stucky, okay. Stucky's prepared. <laughs> Kelly, after the Cubs won the World Series in 2016... What was the first meal, the first food that you had after the Cubs won the World Series? What did I have and what did you have late in the morning on the street? What were you eating? We went full-blown hot dogs. That's right. That's right. There it is. Wow. That's 30 Stucky Bucks. That's 30 Stucky Bucks. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Give it a nice uh, now right I got to decide if I'm going to come up with another one. Do you want to risk the 30 Stucky Bucks and go for the 100 Stucky Bucks? Or do you want to just I give said, up? I just want to hear what question you come up with. Yeah, so I, don't, can... I don't have one. Yeah. My, my mind is way too old and slow for this at this point. Uh, it's not just a bit, guys. No, it's not. It is not just a bit. It really is. <laughs> Stucky Bucks, what question hey, can I get, you, Kelly? Hey, Luke, I don't know if you guys really do have to, to move on, but you think of this question, and I really, I'm really, i curious to ask both of you your oh. biggest takeaways from today's press conference and what, what you thought of Dansby and his introduction and just, uh, in general, any question you think you have moving forward with him as part of this team. Where will he hit in that lineup? I'm curious yeah. about that. I, that's that's uh, good. By the way, that's an old teammate helping me out, knowing uh, that she's she's looking over and seeing the wheel spinning, the hamster running <laughs> in the wheel, and going, "We got to end this bit." <laughs> um, I don't know about you, Cody. I I just I think he will bat lower in the order. I think he might be fourth or fifth. Yeah. But I could I could see them putting him second. I know he he batted a lot of place for for the Braves, right? Like he did move around. I brought that up with six seventy the other day. Uh, they were asking me so the. The Braves suffered a number of injuries throughout the year, and that was the one thing about Dansby I always thought was really impressive. I mean, he led off for a while. I think second is maybe where he felt most comfortable, mm. but he, he also hit ninth for a while out of the gates. He was a little slow in May, and they put him down at, at nine to try and like kind of have that whole double leadoff thing, and he ended up really breaking out at that point. But that is the one thing. I know a lot of guys say, oh, it doesn't matter where you hit, and then you watch their numbers, and it clearly does. Um, mm. But Dansby – I thought no matter where he was in the lineup, he found a way to produce. And so I think that that certainly, I mean, that can help any team, but it will certainly help the Cubs. And and the one thing you guys mentioned, the strikeout rates and, and that sort of thing, but he has a knack for coming through in the big moments. That has always been another thing about Dansby. He loves the whole two outs, runner on second, we need to scratch a run across, give me the bat, let me mm -hmm. have this. 
you know, AB. And um, that he loves it. So the moment definitely never gets too big for Dansby. Um, but I was just curious what you guys thought um, after hearing him um, and if I'm missing anything that I, I just, I think he, I think he said the part about winning. I've never, well, I shouldn't say ever. <laughs> we've all seen some uh, athletes who have a hard time with not winning. <laughs> uh, Dansby can be very surly on the team plane. And for about like two to three hours, like you need to give him his space. Like this guy does hate losing. And I think it's because he's never really had to deal with that at any point in his career. I mean, he has been a winner through and through. It's what he expects of himself. And it's certainly what he's going to expect of his teammates. I mean, he's going to come there and expect to see this team be on the winning track, uh, you know, right away. Yeah, I mean, that was, to me, that was the whole thing. Yeah. I did come up with a question. Uh, Kelly, um, which reporter for uh, Cubs baseball once rode bicycles with Joe Madden? And well, the answer I, is pretty easy. It's Kelly Kroll. I just gave her the 100 Stucky Bucks. <laughs> there it is. She rode bikes with them. Wow. That was one of the best features I, ever because we had the whole minivan like in front of us with like Pat Gastel hanging out the back with the, the hatch <laughs> up trying to like film this. Oh man, that was one of my favorite. That and the, the Jason Hayward landing him the year after 2016, right? To tell us about the whole rain delay speech. Like yeah. that was like, I felt like we were kidnapping him in spring training. Like no one was supposed <laughs> to know. He was supposed to slide into the van. We went to a hotel room that was all set up so that we could do this one-on-one -on -one really quick, get the story and then get him back to the facility. But for whatever reason, it felt like we were kidnapping him in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's interesting. I actually kind of think I remember that, yeah. that feature. It's good yeah. stuff. Hey, hey no, Kelly. Oh, hey. Ryan's here. Yeah, Ryan's joined I, in. I'm Ryan. Uh, very, very clean transition to me coming on the set, obviously. Uh, this, <laughs> That's how we do things here, Ryan. Awesome. <laughs> this, is, this is YouTube. It's not TV. Um, but I, my lone question as, you know, the reporter, the person that's at the ballpark every day, uh, what is Dansby like to work with? Um, especially, like you just mentioned, he's not a happy camper after losses. Um, <laughs> how easy is it to work with Dansby Swanson? What, what, am I, what should I be expecting at the ballpark this year? Yeah, I, I mentioned it a little bit to the guys. First of all, let me say, when I when I say he's surly after loss, he's going to stand there and he's going to answer questions. And you're just going to feel that seething, like, competitive side <laughs> of hating to lose. And it, But, but it, he doesn't make it difficult on you. Like, no offense, and if he hears this, I think he'll agree with us, Luke, but he's no John Lackey after a game, okay? <laughs> like, not intimidating, like, kind of thing like he's gonna stand Haircut. there and talk to you and uh, tell you what has to be better next time I mean and that's mm -hmm. all you can really ask from a guy you're gonna love love having him in there because um he's honest he's genuine um he's forthcoming about things like just like today talking about his deficiencies he's he's not one of those guys that's gonna try to hide that he'll be upfront about it he'll tell you what he's doing to work on it um and, and you love those guys and a personal story for me, and I don't know I, how people take this, but it just, it meant a lot to me. This is the kind of guy Dansby is. Um, when we travel and we're on the road all the time, obviously, like um, we're away from our families a lot. Um, and Sundays, I'm a big church goer myself, but on days where we're on the road and even in general, day games, it's very, very hard to get to church and then get to the ballpark in time. And so obviously the teams always have chapel, but oftentimes the broadcasters are not really included in that, if you will. That's a, that's a team thing. Mm -hmm. It's the guys on the team. Um, but Dansby knew that, um, you know, my face really important to me. And there was a point at which I don't even know how it came up, but I was in the dugout and, and I kind of looked at him and was like, would you mind if I, I hung around? And he's like, Kelly, are, are you, you don't have to ask me. Like, you're welcome to chapel any time. And I'll make sure now that I know that you're aware of the time and where we're doing it from here on out. And that kind of inclusion and just the human side of Dansby understanding it, we, we all have needs. We all have these things while we're on the road and the ups and the downs that can certainly help lift our spirits um, of making sure that, that he does what he can do to help others in those moments. And so I guess all I can say is the guy that you're getting is just a really pros pro, great human, and you're going to love covering him. I really think that. 
Awesome. Fantastic to hear. Yeah. I'd love love to hear that. (laughs) Uh, Kelly, it's been a blast catching up. Uh, I want to wish you happy holidays. And will you come on with us again sometime? I'd love to. Hey, I saw your post about the podcasts and the work that you guys are doing. We're climbing, climbing, Kelly. We're climbing. Keep up the good work. I love watching and I would love to be part of it again. I, I, it's so when, great to see all of you and hear your voices and happy holidays from me as well. Whenever uh, when uh, the Braves come to Chicago next season, you should come stop in. Oh, yeah. We, gotta keep it. we don't see you guys for a while. I think it, it's like we're not there until August and I don't think you guys come to Atlanta until September. Well, and then so. the playoffs, of course. Oh, the playoffs. <laughs> the playoffs. Meet you in the playoffs. Yeah. Kelly, we have a ping pong table here, and yes. I know you're good at the tennis, so I'm going to assume you're good at the ping pong. Yeah. All right, There's also a fridge full of alcohol. Yeah. Well, yeah. And liquid death. And liquid death. And so. liquid death, if you're into liquid that. Liquid death. <laughs> Kelly, any thanks. Any bowling there, Luke? Any, any bowling? Uh, no, there is no bowling. I know you're great at the bowling, too. but I. <laughs> well, I mean, we do have hardwood floors here that we could, we could set something yeah. up. Yeah. Probably. We can get away with it. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kelly. Kelly Kroll from Valley Sports now in Atlanta, of course, did great work here. Uh, NBC Sports Chicago (laughs) covering the Cubs pre and post game. Now she does the same thing covering the Braves and also some uh, work with the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, The ComEd Energy Efficiency Program committed to helping families and businesses in the communities we serve manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. ComEd offers a wide array of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across our territory. Customers can inquire about how to upgrade outdated lighting to energy and money-saving efficient LED lights. Learn more about network lighting to operate your lights through the mobile device and track your facility's energy usage and more. Incentives have recently increased for indoor, outdoor lighting and networked lighting controls, making these projects even more cost-effective than ever before. Visit comed.com slash poweringbiz now to start saving money and energy. And to start a project, contact us at 1-855-433-2700. For more information, email businessee at comed.com or publicsectoree at comed.com. Oh, after watching that press conference, I felt like throwing on my shady rays. I thought, this is going to be too cool. We're all going to need our shades this summer. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely getting the shady rays. Right. Like that, that, you know, that sun at Wrigley mm-hmm. gets, gets in your face. Um, you know, Dansby Swanson may need shady rays too. You never know. That, was that sun, day games at Should shortstop. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll. keep the seagull <laughs> stuff out of your eyes. Yeah, you know? I'll mention it. Uh, yeah. But shady rays never understood why sunglasses were so expensive, so they set out to change it. You don't have to break the bank for quality sunglasses this fall because our friends at Shady Rays have you covered. Shady Rays are premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles catered to everyone in every lifestyle. The best part about Shady Rays, they have the most insane protection program in all of eyewear, lost, and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. You drop them in a lake, off a cliff, you're playing shortstop for the Chicago Cubs, and they fall off your head. Anything, they'll replace them. Even with that strong of a protection <laughs> program, they still manage to make quality that I can tell you holding in my hand seems just as good as any expensive pair that I have ever worn. Shady Rays customers seem to agree with over 200,000 five-star reviews. Shady Rays also provides 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed and have donated over 20 million meals to date. They stand behind their product and told our team that if anyone has a problem, they throw profit out the window and do what it takes to get it right. Free returns and exchanges, you either love the shades or Shady Rays will pay to ship them back. That's it. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season. Use code CHGO for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs for as low as $54. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com where you can find all their newest and best shades. That's actually how my mom did all her Christmas shopping for my cousins. Fifty percent off. Use that code CHGO and got a bunch of. Where shades. else are you getting fifty Shady by? Rays. Where else are you getting Bogo on shades? Exactly. So, Shady Rays, CHGO, fifty percent off. Bogo, do but, it. But do Ryan, it didn't you just give away all your mom's Christmas presents to, before your family members got them, or has she already presented the? 
Well, now they all know they're getting sunglasses. No, yeah, well, I mean, that's a problem. Oh, no, no. <laughs> like, I hope they're not listening to the podcast <laughs> today. They're yeah, going to be like, oh, we got some. I, these sure Sorry, Ryan's like sunglasses. family. You're all very nice. He just yeah. ruined but, it for just, you all. But you don't know just which Just open pair. up the present on you don't Christmas know which Day pair. And, yeah, exactly. and pretend. Yeah. 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 Well, they, they don't know what else they were got. They got. <laughs> I mean, I've been pretty I've been pretty loud about how I bought my entire family that's CHGO true. gear for Christmas. Yeah. Like, my family. Uh, they don't know getting... which piece, but they're, they're all getting CHGO swag for Christmas. And if my family's listening, you're getting nothing and you're going to like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, do you want Ryan. to switch back seats? This feels weird. Yeah, switch. You guys, you have to? I, I'd like to see you switch. Yeah, right. I like switch. being in the middle. Well, people, I know how you are with the. Yeah, well, people, I know you guys. You know. You now, I will say, Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Cody sat in the middle seat and he's like, "Wow, I kind of like this this angle. This is a, this is this feels comfortable." No, see this straight ahead. He's got to be on the corner. I got to. I'm the starting to think I should sit in the middle. I mean, that one that one time that I hosted, whenever you were out. Uh huh. I mean. People were saying I was coming for your job, Stuck. And you sat in this chair, right? I sat right? in your chair. And how did you like this chair? I liked it. So, honestly, if you want to well, switch. it's because I've broken yeah. this chair in a little bit. You know, yeah. it's got a little. Cody did get You really... can host from over here, but I'll sit there. <laughs> he did get really <laughs> comfortable over there. Yeah, I, I saw it. I watched. Uh, and then I was back the next day. Um, so, Ryan, first of all, back from the press conference, he ran to Wrigley Field, did the press conference. And uh, we heard your voice loud and proud, throwing the CHGO Ryan out there from CHGO. Um, you asked the yeah. you asked a question that we were all thinking. Like everybody's been talking about. Okay, we hear the offensive deficiencies where where he may need to improve. He addressed that, and then he also you were asking about defense, right? Because we we know that's what he's great at. Yeah, no, definitely. And and I asked that question. Well, for one, because I know Brendan would love it. Yeah, um, right. Just want, yeah. want to make Brendan happy. Um, but two, you know, I we we have like we have talked about how he fits in this team defensively all off season, right? But obviously, we haven't heard him talk about it, and so that was one of the things on my mind is what is he looking forward to as far as um, you know Nico and, and pairing with him up the middle, uh, middle infield, and you know turning double plays. But he also, you know, came up with uh, mentioned Jan Gomes and, and Cody Bellinger and said, "You're only as good as your defense up the middle." So, uh, yeah, I mean that that was the question on my mind. I, it sounded like he's he knows what the Cubs have defensively up the at least up the middle, but all over the field. He also mentioned later uh, to the side uh, after the the presser when we kind of got him on the side. He mentioned you know Ian Happ obviously winning the Gold Glove, Seiya Suzuki yeah. who's um, was a Gold Glove defender in Japan, and, and you know. Once he gets more used to playing in that right field, that Wrigley field, which we know is, is a little difficult, um, he knows there's defensive uh, pieces on this team that, as you know, the as this team starts finding their identity, that def- the defensive side is going to be uh, one of the major parts of that. So I think we have Ryan's uh, question, and then the answer from Dansby, and it goes on to talk about. Uh, I think it's Megan Montemurro asked about, like, where he can improve because he talked about, you know, that was one of the first things he wanted, right? He, he asked the Cubs, how are we going to win and how are you going to make me better, right? Mm-hmm. So if we have Ryan's question, let's, let's go to that, Sarah. It's B. It's listed as B. Hey, Dansby. Uh, this is Ryan Herrera with CHGO. Uh, you mentioned Nico earlier uh, as part of like the talent on the team, but with the new rules, with the shift and all that stuff coming uh, at the end of the season, uh, what excites you about what you and Nico can do uh, up the middle uh, defensively and, and obviously help this team? There's nothing better than having a good defensive unit. It's something that I feel like can get overlooked in our game these days and just analytics, this and this and that. And um, to me, you're only as you're only as good as your your four defenders in the middle. So, well, obviously pitching is a big part of it, but center field, shortstop, second base, and catcher. Uh, and I feel like the group that we have is is pretty elite in that category. Belly is obviously a great center fielder. Jan's had a lot of experience, you know, behind the plate. And then uh, Nico and myself just really feel like that as a defensive unit, we can be as solid as anybody. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a little bit of time to get, you know, used to one another in the communication, but. Uh, from everything that I've heard, you know, about Nico, that he's just a winner. The guy wants to win. He's a baseball player. You give him a glove and he's going to go play. And he's obviously really, really good at it. Uh, you know, when you kind of combine that kind of mentality uh, with how, you know, I like to do things, it, us- it usually, you know, fits like a glove. And I really, no pun intended, but um, it usually fits really well. And, uh, you know, something that I'm really looking forward to in spring training, just getting out there and 
probably going to suggest to Rossi that he makes our schedules the exact same so we can play, you know, as many games as possible together uh, in spring training. You know, I think offensively um, is a thing that has continued to get more and more consistent every year. Uh, and I've continued to grow uh, in experience as a hitter. Um, obviously, the power has, has become, you know, a lot more prevalent than most people probably would have thought. Uh, my biggest thing now is just the, a little bit more of the average piece, the, the swing and miss end zone, um, which has led to obviously more strikeouts than I would like. Uh, it's not something that I want. Uh, I don't like to strike out. Nobody likes to strike out. It's obviously a part of the game, but some of that can be a little bit, uh, you know, like, like my own fault, essentially just with some of the swing and miss end zone. Uh, so just wanting to get better uh, at that, being able to spray the ball around the field a lot more consistently. Uh, which you know typically leads to better to better results overall. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing for me. Uh, Carter and I have already had some discussions about that, uh, and I think you know just I think that's kind of like a spot on assessment of what's of what's kind of like the next step in becoming uh, you know the player I want to be. Taking the number seven away from Jan Gomes, I'm sure Ooh. that cost him a little something something. Uh, other great sevens in Cubs history. Jody Davis, Joe Girardi, the riot wart, br- very briefly. Uh, riot. Mark DeRosa. Mark DeRosa. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I really, I, I laughed at the part where he was talking about playing 162. Mm-hmm. You know, like he said, he played all 60 mm-hmm. in the shortened season. Then he played 160 the next season. Last year he played all 162. And that it, the topic already came up with David Ross in a conversation like, He's like, there's going to be some pushback, but we've already addressed it. I want to play all 162 yeah. as a leader, right? Yeah. And when they talk about winning and what you want in a leader and, and, and how the two are meshed together, he, he gave all the right answers yeah. for me today. To me, you know, I've seen some comments, um, a lot of people comparing this presser to John Lester in a way in terms of how it was – how it became perceived and stuff. And yeah, I mean, in a way, you can say that the things that Swanson said can go with that. He definitely has the leadership qualities that I don't think a lot of us really saw before this presser. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's exciting to hear that, yeah, he wants to play all 162. You know what I mean? Like, he's not just here to collect a paycheck and, you know, go about the back end of his career now. It's like he, he genu- – it seems like he genuinely cares about winning and, and – and, and playing the game the right way and, 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 all the, and all these things that, you know, someone who is going to take this team to another level, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all, all, all signs point up for this team uh, with all the things he's saying. So, yeah, no, I, I love that about him. Well, Jack the, with the chat of the day, by the way, saying Swanson yeah. wears number seven, signed for seven years, $177 million. Swanson batted 277 with 177 hits last year, and Swanson, the name, has seven letters in it. The signs. He's the looking signs. for all the signs. Um, one of the things that really uh, struck me, and I think it was John Greenberg uh, of The Athletic that asked the question uh, just about, about, the pressure. The, about the pressure of, yeah. you know, obviously Jason Hayward. Mm-hmm had the pressure of he still has the 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 richest contract in franchise history and uh not that he didn't live up to the pressure but the he didn't live up to the contract at at least on the offensive side uh now Dansby Swanson obviously comes in with the same kind of pressure to live up to a a big contract the second biggest in Cubs history um I just really liked his answer talking about you know he had we got it you want to hear it oh yeah let's do that we we got it that's perfect like Mm -hmm. That is the John Greenberg question. It'll be listed under C. It's it's Dansby talking about the pressure yeah, of a hundred and seventy seven million dollar deal. Uh I mean if you guys would have seen the pressure it was put on me to perform in my hometown over the last six years, uh in a way this is uh just another, you know, kind of step in that challenge. It's I've never been one to back away from challenges. I always feel like you should just face them head on do the same thing with this. Uh, at the end of the day, the vision and the goal is to win. Winning is the priority. And when that is the vision and that's what you want to do, you make everything about winning. Um, so it's never about one guy. It's always about everybody. And so when you get everyone going in the same direction, none of the outside noise matters. Obviously, everyone knows that Chicago Cubs fans are like the best fans in baseball. They support their team. They love their team. They show up each and every day, no matter where the city is. 
Um, so to be able to perform for a, uh, 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 a town like that is pretty remarkable. Um, and, you know, I'm just, I'm excited for, for what's ahead. It's something that, um, you know, I walked down the field today and I just looked at my wife and said, like, this is where we're supposed to be. And just so excited for this unique journey ahead. Tansy, Maddie Lee from the Sun Times. On the leadership front, talking to Jameson early in the week, he said he was really impressed that you brought up that you want to make your way through the roster, call every single guy. How far have you gotten in that process? And what have those conversations been like? Well, I've been back in America for like 48 hours now because we were on our honeymoon. So um, <laughs> I was wanting to wait uh, till things died down just a little bit. But yeah, I have uh, requested, um, you know, Rossi and VJ got me the, you know, the spreadsheet of everybody's name and numbers. So I'll, I'm sure over the next couple of days, I'll start making my way through and, and making some phone calls and reaching out to guys, just to introduce myself, get a feel for everybody and, and really just have conversations to get to know one another. Um, you know, team, team chemistry, there was always a saying uh, that, you know, good teams hang out together. Right. And so just kind of setting that precedent now and wanting to chat and, you know, genuinely get to know your your teammates and people that you're gonna, you know, be strapping it up with every day. That means a lot to me, and you know, it's something that can help this organization thrive going forward. Winning is, uh, it's a, uh, it starts like with the mentality. It starts with the belief that each and every day that you're not showing up wanting to win, you're showing up that you're going to win. It's never an if; it's just a matter of when. And I think that that's that's kind of like the first start, right? And and when you start to win, it really starts to build confidence. Uh, you know, in, in this organization, it starts to build confidence within your teammates. Winning baseball is really just about playing the game to win. And I know it sounds super cliche, but there are so many times and examples where you can tell, like, oh, this guy, you know, he's doing this for himself or, you know, he was wanting to do this to get the RBI instead of moving the runner or whatever. And there's just so many instances where there's teaching moments of where, you know, if we're if, if everything that we're doing is, you know, Instead of me saying, I'm going to go out and strike out six guys today, it's like, no, I'm going to pitch to win today. Sometimes it's it might be eight strikeouts, nine strikeouts. Some days it might be two. With the mentality of pitching to win, hitting to win, playing defense to win, um, at the end of the day, you just have to have more runs on the board than they do at the end of the game. And when, as a team, you can collectively say, we're looking to do things to win, and that's all that matters, whether I go 0 for 4, 4 for 4. And if I go 4 for 4 and we lose, I'm not a happy camper. You can ask my wife. Yeah, like, we don't do losing. That's like not. <laughs> that's not something we like. Um, so the the important goal is winning. That's like the only stat that matters. And bringing that sort of philosophy is is really really important. It's something important to get all the guys to buy into, which they will. That's that's just who we are at, at our core, um, and you know who I believe that will be going forward. So Dansby Swanson on Marquee Sports Network uh, earlier this morning, and he was great, and it was great that Marquee carried it so everybody could see it and hear it, and it was enjoyable. And uh, we'll be talking about Dansby for days to come now. We're also going to talk in a second about Carlos Correa, the other, one of the other free agent shortstops that we talked about a lot. But, Cody, uh, another time when winning is important is when you're placing your DraftKings bet or the pick of the week. Yeah, so yesterday I had a very profitable day. So I'm I'm riding into tonight feeling real good about myself, not only because the Cubs signed or officially signed Dansby Swanson and he said all the right things that made me feel all giddy inside, <laughs> but because my bank account is just looking a lot better than it did Large. going into the week, right? Is it? You uh, notice Cody's sitting like this? He's a little off kilter. It's because his wallet's larger yeah, than it was yesterday. Is, you know, it's, 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 it's all it's off kilter. Packed, you know what I mean? Uh, but tonight, college basketball, right? Um, I'm not betting on any team in this city right now because I can't rely on any of them. So we're going to the co to college basketball. And I like St. John's plus five against Villanova. Uh, former point guard Andre Corbello plays for St. John's. They, they're they 11-1 and one going to Villanova that doesn't have Jay Wright anymore as their coach because he retired. A 6-5 and five Villanova team. You're giving me five points against that Villanova team that I've watched a few times, and they're just very meh. Meanwhile, again, St. John's, 11-1. and one. Again, haven't won a road game, though, so this is that would probably be why they're five-point underdogs. But I like them to, you know, hang around tonight. Lose lose by four. Four or less. <laughs> I, I, I just realized, Cody, I, I told you before that your pick of the week should be 
Mizzou to cover against Illinois bragging rights tomorrow, but you can't because you can't bet on college teams in Illinois. That's right. But until, if you're somewhere else. Until the sports book at Wrigley Field finally there opens, then I can go and make that dumb bet. If the DraftKings right. sports book. The DraftKings sports book. If, yes. if you are able, if you are, do live in a place that's not Illinois that does have legal sports gambling, I'm telling you right now, I don't even know what the spread is, but I'm telling you right now, <laughs> they're going to cover. Mizzou they, basketball they, will cover. Honestly, <laughs> they probably will because <laughs> Illinois has just been very underwhelming to start the year. So. You could always get tickets to the game because True. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. If you've ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you thought you could never get, 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, it's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on seats you thought you never could buy, and you won't find a better deal this season on Bulls tickets created by fans for the fans, guaranteeing the lowest price. If you love CHGO, you're going to love Game Time. The best way to support us by buying your tickets through the link in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app to score the best seats to all your favorite events. Okay, so late, like we, we had on the podcast yesterday that Correa, the physical something was weird. They canceled his press the very conference end. with the Giants at the very end of the podcast. Then in the middle of the night, we joked about it leaving here like, oh, somebody's going to swoop in. And we, we joked, the Cubs should give him $5 million to play third base next year and I'll prove it deal. <laughs> if the Mets don't go out and throw around all that money, they go, oh, all right, we'll do 12, 3, 15, and they probably won't even have them take a physical. Well, apparently uh, Steve Cohen was in Hawaii. Yeah. And once they, <laughs> once they found out about that, they you know got on the phone or something and, and did the deal from freaking Hawaii. Yeah. Aloha means 315 oh million God, now. Apparently. Well, it's funny because, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just I'm just a night owl. I was awake. It was almost one thirty in the morning, I wanna say. And all of a sudden I see this pop up on Twitter. I'm like, John Heyman, I'm like, Are we are we sure? Are we sure? And then I saw Susan Slusser, who covers the Giants, confirm it and you know, the, the details started pouring out and I'm like, This like people are going to wake up and Can just be imagine? completely shocked. Well, you guys, I mean, me and Corey were awake, but I'm like, oh, these I guys out. were fast yeah. asleep. I'm I like, was fast they're asleep. They're going to wake up to some shit. I woke like, up and funny. I was that gif of the guy who takes his sunglasses and, and twi- like puts <laughs> down the, the shades or whatever. I was taking my shady rays and like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you imagine if, it was the, if this was the other way around? If the Cubs oh, had spent, if, if Dansby, Ugh. if they had signed Correa to the big Ugh. deal that a lot of people Man. wanted. Lord. Dansby then went to another team. Maybe it was the Giants or whoever back to the Braves. And so he's off the board. And we're sitting here thinking we got the Cubs. Cody would be in Lake Michigan right now. Oh, We'd, be We'd be throwing him a life vest. We'd be throwing him a life vest. Cody, come back. <laughs> Don't come back, Cody. Swim to the vest. Swim to the <laughs> yeah. vest. The, the weird thing about it was to me, like as Susan Slusser uh, did a little reporting out there um, and got more of the details that it was apparently like a – pre MLB issue that was like the the injury or whatever yeah whatever it was that it was like something that obviously had not cropped up since he started you know since he got in MLB and that was the issue that that they found on the physical that they disagreed on and it kind of like it, it felt weird because I'm like if obviously all these other teams the Twins gave him thirty five million dollars a year for three years like but they unless, didn't give him three fifty. But like, but three fifty for thirteen is a lot. Yeah, of, but even then they still three fifteen for twelve. They still well, offered well now, him, but yeah. it was for the Giants deal was three fifty yeah. for thirteen years, right? But even but even then they still well, well yeah. they still offered yeah, yeah, yeah. him. No, I know a big contract this off season, fully you know, having his physical, like probably having as updated a physical as any team can have. Yeah, but you know prior to this, so it makes me feel like the like if other teams didn't see this as an issue or if they somehow just completely missed it, especially the twins who signed him last year. Um, I don't, it, it feels weird and it feels like it may have been just something like, damn, we don't want to give him $350 million. Like this is an issue that maybe we can renegotiate it down and give him less money. And then it just turned into, well, Hey, Mr. Cohen, uh, how big is your checkbook yeah. right now? Well, I mean, th- how open is your checkbook? Either a, the giants will greatly regret this or B the Mets will greatly regret this because yeah. the Mets now, who did they dish out cash to? Verlander, Senga, right? Senga. They already gave huge money to oh, Lindor. Narva- Narvaez. They um, gave uh, Diaz had a huge what, offseason contract, yeah, yeah. right? Passon tweeted them all out. I guess just just over $800 million total. 
this off season. Yeah, their luxury tax, yeah, like 111 yeah. penalty is going to be over a hundred million dollars. Yeah, 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 I think they'll be. Aren't they spending? Well, because they were over the luxury tax last year. Yeah, so I, I think, think it's like 110 million. I think it's, million I think it's up even more. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's insane. Listen, listen. Someone, I saw someone say 90 cents to the dollar. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm gl- but I, if that's it, I'm all for it because <laughs> it pushes the other teams to be like, well, we yeah. got to spend a little bit more. Oh, yeah, man. listen, like that's kind of my thought process on it. Is like, sure, this Correa contract might it might age horrifically for the Mets. Maybe the Giants are are, are dodging a bullet, but yeah. I don't like. I guess for Correa, it's himself now knowing what we know. Like, I'm just not convinced that. Like I'm, I'm not convinced that that the Mets made the right decision here because like the Giants were Multiple like the Cubs. Times. <laughs> the Giants were like the Cubs in the situation of needing an impact player, a star player, all this stuff, and they let this whole thing with the physical happen, and they let it go on for six days after the announced they announced the signing. Fan, they they let. They let fans get excited about Arson Judge for like five minutes, and On then they, his jersey, and then they got excited about Carlos Correa for six days, and now they don't get anyone. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like what you said, Luke, in, in a way of this somebody's might, regretting. Someone's going to regret this, and right now I feel like the Mets are more likely going to regret it. But when you have an owner like Steve Cohen, are they really going to regret it? Because Car- I don't they know. could just like if they could they they it's the way that they're spending money. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if things aren't working out in three or four years that they just say see ya, yeah. like pay him out the money to like he can become the new Bobby uh, Bonilla or Bobby whatever Bonilla. his name is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's the, like would the I don't I genuinely yeah. don't know if the Mets will ever regret it because of the way their their owner works. He's just like I want this team to be good and I'm going to do whatever it takes yeah. to do it. Like and I respect it as much as I like hate it because I wish it was the Cubs doing it, but, like, I think it's, we're more likely to see the Giants regret it in a way just because they don't they didn't, they're they not going to get a big name this offseason. But I am now intrigued to see how healthy Carlos Correa yeah. is next season. Well, there's a part of me that thinks the Cubs are probably happy that his deal with the Giants went down, yeah. they could focus on Dansby Swanson, and then obviously the, the market opened up after they had already gotten Swanson. In like, hindsight. Uh, <laughs> All the huffing and puffing that we did, it yeah. does appear that the Cubs may come out on top on this. Dansby Swanson for seven I, for one seventy seven. Yeah, I in the press conference said all the right things. Kelly says absolutely, this is the guy you want it short. Right, this is the leader you want it short. Mm-hmm. And by the way, tomorrow we're going to talk to another Cubs leader. Special announcement: Ian Happ joining the podcast. Yes. One twenty tomorrow. Woo. Be right here. So if you Ian thought, Happ, yeah, one twenty. There we go. If I you like thought that. Dansby Day was cool and having Kelly Crawl on the podcast, mm. our the, for the three of us, the last podcast before the holidays, we're presenting the gifts of CHGO. Ian Happ is going to join us for a podcast while we all sit and get ready for the blizzard. Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, we won't be How in cool studio. How cool is that? But yeah. yeah, no, we won't be here. But we're like. We'll be sitting at we'll home. Be Ian will be sitting at home. We'll have our Connect roasters. Everybody have a yeah. cup of Connect. And uh, then we'll be ready and we'll talk to the Gold Glove All Star left fielder from your Chicago Cubs. It's going to be exciting. Who's ready? It'll be cool. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to hear what you guys ask him. I've, I won't be on the show. Uh, Jared will be stepping in for me, but excited to see what you guys do with, with Ian Happ tomorrow. We're going to have yeah. fun. Uh, Ryan's going to have some Maybe great he'll stuff. He'll have me or Luke come on his podcast after we promote him. Oh, well, you'd be a little dangerous probably. Big but, brain you know. stuff. That's what I'm, that's that's what right. I'm all about. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Ryan will have uh, great stuff about Dansby Swanson from today, his press conference, allchgo.com. Uh, again, a lot of stuff has been now unlocked, but if you are a diehard, you get even more of our stuff, and diehards also get 20% off. And right now, uh, the diehard deal is still going on. You can gift that membership for the holidays – a uh, great deal. Gives a family member the gift of CHGO for a full year. You get the discounts on the events. You get the discounts on the merch. You get, uh, you get more to, access to the articles and things we do. You get to go into our Discord and 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 leave leave fake tweets that that's tell right. us news that's not true, like someone <laughs> did today. 
Um, you get to do the happy hours free that we're shirt. eventually going to have. You get the free shirt when you when you sign up for it. And overall, you get the the, the the diehard card. You can walk around. You can be like that guy at Boston College giving the Costco card. You can be that guy. I mean, <laughs> that's right. The diehard. There's card. just not like yeah. if you yeah. haven't become a diehard a CHO yet, then I don't know what you're doing. Just brother. hand that card over. Yippee ki yay! Couldn't be me. Could, yeah, couldn't be, be me. me. I'm couldn't a diehard me. since day one. And I uh, here. by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed last night we were up to number three podcast in America. Number for three. Podcast. We because and Luke sat guys. here yesterday and we were like, number six. You let's, know what, you let's know what the number three, three is? It's also a W. Yeah. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, thanks for checking out the CHGO <laughs> Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top rated sports book. Download the app and make sure you sign up using the promo code CHGO. We will see you. Thanks to Kelly Crawl. We'll see you for Ian Happ. 120 on Thursday. Be there. And until then, fly the W.